So first, let's briefly talk about camera memory cards. There are three popular types, the compact flash card, which is the larger of the three, an SD card, and a micro SD card for GoPros, mobile phones, and really small point and shoot cameras. Now, when it comes to digital photography, there are three things that really matter as far as the card size, and that's card capacity, write speed, and data transfer speed. Now, card capacity, what size card should you get? Again, that depends on your budget and need and what size your camera captures images at and whether you shoot JPEG or RAW. But generally, with today's cameras, I would recommend getting two 32 gig cards or two 64 gig cards, one to use and one as a backup. Now look at these two charts. The top one is for JPEG shooters only. Now let's say your camera captures 22 meg images. Then if you're shooting only JPEG, you can get over a thousand images on an eight gigabyte card. If you start shooting RAW at some point, you can only get about 100 images on an 8 gig card. And trust me, at some point, if you love photography, you are going to shoot RAW. That's why I recommend either the 32 or 64 gig cards, because there's a ton of memory there and they're super affordable. Now you should never shoot until a card is completely full because it can corrupt the card and all the images on it. That's rare, but it does still happen. Anyway, card memory is cheap, and it's just getting cheaper. A good grade brand speed memory card, like this 64 gig SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is perfect for 4K video and pretty much any digital photography, is less than $18. But if you see cards that are over $100, like this 128 gig card, which is the same brand card, still a SanDisk, but the bus speed, the UHS rating, makes it so expensive. You do not need the UHS-2 cards, unless you're capturing 8K raw video with incredibly expensive video cameras. For all your photography needs, even if you're doing some 4K video shooting, all you'll ever need is the UHS-1 cards. Now, write speed is important. This is probably the most critical factor in selecting a card. Your card choice must have a fast enough write speed to keep up with the incoming data, but that choice is easy. You see, SD cards have six different speed classes, but only the U3 class is capable of writing at the speed required for 4K video. So choose only cards that have U3 marking, and that's the number three inside the capital U, and you'll always be fine for any digital photography needs, raw shooting, and any 4K video capture. Now, once you've bought the card, and again, this is the one I recommend. So once your card is chosen, how do you transfer or download your images to the computer? You know, the ingest process. Now, most cameras come with a cord to connect the camera to the computer. Most camera cords are only USB type A 2.0, which is super slow. Now, if your camera cord is a USB type A, but a newer generation like a 3.1 or 3.2 or USB 4, then you're good because those are pretty fast but you also have to make sure that you have a 3.0 or higher port on your computer. Remember, all the USB type A ports look exactly the same with that rectangular shape. So you basically have to read the info about your computer if you, if you don't know what it is, that's how you're gonna find out. But generally, never download images with the cord connecting your camera to your computer since it's the slowest way possible, unless again, it's some kind of weird emergency. Otherwise, this should never be a part of your regular workflow. You should always either use the SD slot on your computer, and almost all computers have these nowadays, or you need to buy a card reader. This card reader reads both SD and compact flash. Some advanced and pro cameras actually have two card slots, one for each size. But here are some different ones that are good and affordable. Usually the less money you spend, uh, the little bit slower it'll be. Like notice this $10 one is a USB 3.0, but the other ones are 3.1 and 3.2 generations. Now you can always spend more money than this. There are card readers that cost, you know, close to $100 or over $100, but you don't need those. So newer computers like MacBooks don't even offer the USB type A port anymore. So if you're in that position where you're owning a newer Mac, you would have to buy this $80 adapter, which I think is a total hassle. Notice this adapter offers two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, a micro SD card slot, and an SD slot. But again, if you're not in this situation and you don't have the card reader built in your computer that you need, just buy a separate card reader. Now, again, why not connect the camera to the computer? Well, we already covered there's two main sizes of ports on your computer, and that's the USB type A and the USB type C. You need to figure out whether your USB type A rectangular port is a 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2 or higher. If you have a USB C connection, well then that's gonna be the fastest of any of them. 
So definitely I recommend using that one if you have the option. Okay, so most camera cords are only USB type A 2.0, which transfers about 480 megabits per second. Most normal computers today with a regular SD slot where you just plug the memory card directly into the computer can transfer over 100 megabytes per second. Okay, these are a lot of numbers, but what does it really mean? There are 8,000 megabits in one megabyte. So take that 8,000 megabits and divide it by the 480 speed of the 2.0 connection, and you're gonna get about 16.7, which means it's gonna take about 16.7 seconds to transfer one megabyte of information. So you saw on that previous chart, if you have a 22 meg file that's compressed to 6.6 megabytes, well, that means it's going to take almost two minutes to transfer one image. It takes forever. So if you take that SD card out of your camera and plug it into your computer that transfers over 100 megabytes a second, so that's 16.7 times 100, that essentially means plugging your SD card directly into your computer to transfer is going to be about 1,670% faster than transferring it, connecting it via your cord. And that doesn't, even that may not sound like a lot, but the, the way to think about it is if that camera cord connection is five miles an hour, then 1,600% faster would be 85 miles per hour. See how much faster that would be just in the same kind of percentage uptick in something we all understand, which is miles per hour. So always remove your memory card from your camera and plug it directly into your computer or plug it directly into a card reader that you, connect, that you can connect to the fastest port on your computer. Now, if you don't have Bridge or Lightroom, which isn't covered in this class, here is the way to quickly download your images to your computer, but again, you have zero control of naming, copywriting, etc. This just shows you how to get the photos off of your card and onto your computer the quickest way possible. But again, you can have this exact same speed, but going through Bridge gives you so many more options. Once you plug your card in and your computer recognizes it, you can right click and create a new folder and just title that folder. Then you can double click on the memory card itself, you're going to have a series of folders for Canon. It's DCIM, toggle it open, toggle open the uh, 100 Canon, which is the default. And you can select the top one, hold the shift key and select the last one and pull all the individual images over to a folder. That's the quickest way to do it without any control. And again, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way at all. And I only say that if you're intending to be a photographer, designer, or something like that. So basically that means you're taking a class to learn more about photography and you don't really have Photoshop or Bridge. So if you're just using your camera software, some free software like photop.com or GIMP to edit your photos, then this is the best way to get your images to your computer instead of downloading them through your camera cord connection. But if you're ever in a bind, this is still about a thousand, well, 1600 times faster than downloading it from connecting your camera to the computer. Always verify that your images are in there and then I'll eject or remove the memory card and then I'll put it back in my camera and format it immediately. So that way it's 100% wiped and I'm ready for my next shoot. So if you actually do have Bridge, well, go watch the video about how to download your images using Bridge. It's about eight minutes and it will change your life. Hey, if you like this video and it helps, you can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. Whoa. Yes! <laughs>